Okay, in today's lesson, we are going to be looking at bond polarity versus molecule polarity. And if we uncover this little dude right here, you will see all we need to have bond polarity is to have different atoms. That will make the bond a polar bond. And it will be what we call a dipole, and we'll see what dipoles are about in just a moment. Molecule polarity is a whole different animal. Okay? On molecule polarity, all you're going to need is to have the, the, an idea of the shape. Once you know the shape, then you need to know the symmetry. Because either one could could uh, make a difference. When you look at the trigonal plane, you have perfect symmetry, so long as all of the atoms around the central atom are the same. And we'll show some, you some examples of that in just a minute. As we go over here, we're going to see a whole bunch of stuff, and it's kind of a busy screen, so I'll put a shade up so we can kind of concentrate on one thing at a time. But before we go back to this, or go on with that, I want to go back to what we were looking at earlier, and let's see what a polar bond is all about. The polarity, and let's get rid of all this stuff here. Uh, okay, now that I've gotten rid of the extra stuff here, we want to look at what is bond polarity. Bond polarity happens when you have two different atoms and one of them is more electronegative than the other. Now, fluorine is the most, fluorine, this guy right here, is the most electronegative of all the atoms. So we know that silicon has got to be less electronegative, and the way we show a bond polarity is to draw a line like that that goes towards where the electrons are going. Okay, and this becomes what we call a partial negative, and the other end would become a partial positive, and that would be considered a polar bond. Now, in, in the carbon chlorine, we have the same situation, and the polarity would go this way, because chlorine is more electronegative than carbon, and we would have a partial what on the right? No, it's neither. This is the lowercase Greek letter delta. Delta, the larger, the, the capital looks like that. Okay? So this is the lower lowercase. This is the positive. This is what, end? This is the guy that's more electronegative. He's going to grab electrons. The electrons are going to move in the direction of the chlorine more than they will move towards the carbon in the bond. Okay? So if this is the end, if the chlorine end has more electrons, what will its charge be? Huh? Negative. negative. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be a partial negative, and this guy will be a partial positive. So always more of my negative That is a perfect summary the one with more electronegativity, and that's what electronegativity is all about. How much in a bond, and this is the bond, the bonded electrons, or the bonded atoms, I mean, how much does one bond hold relative to the other when you have electrons that are being shared? And the electrons will move towards the chlorine more than they will towards the carbon. Okay, so that will make a polar bond. Now, let's go to the page that we were going to go to. Now, we're back on the page that I, I was going to go to first and decided to move to a different page. Let's look at just a couple of molecules. Notice the H2O on the top left here. Okay, H2O is going to be, we're, we're going to figure this guy out. Okay, so first of all, we have to draw a Lewis structure. And the Lewis structure is what I drew in right here. Okay, that's the Lewis structure for water. Now, are there unshared pairs on the central atom? No. 
Yes. Okay, unshared pairs or dots? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Okay, so on water, the oxygen has unshared pairs. That's why the hydrogens I drew coming down instead of straight out. And so when that happens, even if uh, atoms on both sides of the oxygen were different, that means they would not have symmetry. These guys are symmetrical because they're both hydrogen on both sides of the oxygen. Yeah. Shared pairs are the bonds. Okay, the lines. All lines are shared pairs. They're what we call bonding electrons. You okay with that? Uh-huh. So as we go on here, the unshared pairs cause the linear, what might be a linear molecule to go bent. And for the same reason, a trigonal planar molecule will come into a trigonal pyramid by the use of unshared pairs on the central atom. <coughs> so this dude is polar. That is a polar molecule. Now, let's look at another example here, the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is just to the right of the water. And so as we look at that guy, the oxygens are the same atom on both sides of a carbon. Same kind of atom. Are there unshared pairs on the central atom? No. No unshared pairs. And we call this symmetrical because the oxygens on both sides are the same kind of atom. And because of that, this guy is going to be called non-polar. Unshared pairs, polar, like the water. Share, no unshared pairs, no lone pairs, however you want to say it, that's non-polar. Right on. Now, I drew another one in here that wasn't on my original drawing, and I did that to make a point on symmetry. This, the CO2 molecule, is symmetrical. The SCO, SCO, is a polar molecule. And why is it polar? Because it's not symmetrical. It has uh, oxygen on one end, that pulls more than the silicon does. So as a molecule, it has a dipole, and that dipole looks like this. Which end, which end is this, the negative or the positive? Oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. So the oxygen is the negative side because its electronegativity is bigger. Yeah. And the other side is a partial plus. Okay, just like we were showing for a single bond, now we have it for the molecule. And that makes this molecule a polar molecule. Even though it has the same layout as does the carbon dioxide, and there's no unshared pairs on the central atom, the problem is that makes it a polar molecule is that the oxygen and sulfur have different electronegativities and create a dipole for that molecule, and it becomes polar. Okay, let's go down here. Let's look at a tetrahedral. Okay, see the CH4 on the far left? Okay, the CH4 we have, is there symmetry here? Yes, this is all symmetry, So, because all the hydrogens, all the atoms around the carbon are the same atom, hydrogen. Yes? You will know when the molecule is bent because you'll have unshared pairs on the oxygen, in this case. We're looking at the water molecule again. Okay? Right here? What? No. Double lines are a double bond. 
unshared pairs are loners. They are not involved in a bond. These are bonding electrons, the lines. The guys that are dots are not shared. They're just there, okay? And they will cause a bending of a linear, and they will also call make a, a trigonal plane into a trigonal pyramid. Okay? So our methane, because it's symmetrical, are there unshared pairs on that, that central atom? Any dots you see on that carbon? Okay. So what do you think? What's this gonna be? Nonpolar. Non you bet. This guy's nonpolar. All right, let's go to the ammonia. Okay, ammonia is here on the right, NH3. And let's look at it. We got a line here, a line here, a line here. There's three lines going to the hydrogens. And what's that dude on top? Lone pair. He's a lone pair. He's a loner. Yeah. And he's not sharing. So that becomes a polar molecule. All right. I'm doing the polars in red and the non-polars in green. Okay. Let's look down a little more now. Ah, what about this guy? Anybody want to take a guess? He, he's what? Why, is it, why do you think he's non-polar? No unshared pairs on the central atom, but is he symmetrical? No. You see that chlorine there? Okay. This guy's going to have a dipole, and the dipole is going to look like this because chlorine is more electronegative than the hydrogens. So the other end will be over here. What end is the chlorine, positive or negative? Higher electronegativity. Negative. Okay? And so the other guy will be positive. Yes? I'm sorry? NH4? That's ammonia. That's, no, no, ammonium is NH4. This is NH3, ammonia. Okay? They, they sound very similar, but they're different. Okay? Here, here is the last little summary that gets you everything you need. So let's look at this and make sure we understand. Here, let's get a shade up here. Get this out of the way. All right. If we look at this, notice the or on the right. Polar. If the unshared pairs, if you have unshared pairs, or if the terminal atom, what are the terminal atoms? Let's look at a molecule, and I'll show you the terminal atoms. The hydrogens, those are terminal atoms, okay? Let's look at another uh, molecule, the uh, CO2. The CO2, uh, O here. Okay, CO2, the terminal atoms are what? The oxygen, right? The guys on the outside of the central atom. So if, the unshared, if there's unshared pairs or if the terminal atoms are different, either one, it's going to be polar. So what do you have to have to make it non-polar? No unshared pairs. And you have to have terminal atoms the same. Got to have both. Because if you only have one of these, then you will not have a, a uh, non-polar molecule. You'll have a polar molecule. The terminal atoms in the methane here, in this guy, your terminal atoms are hydrogens. In this guy, the CO2, your terminal atoms are oxygen. Okay. All right. That's it. I hope this helps you.